Now, the Prime Minister is seeking to shore up his leadership today as he promises to cut red tape for small businesses. It follows claims that some MPs have been considering a plan to oust him. This, of course, comes after days of criticism about comments allegedly made by the Tory donor Frank Hester that Labour MP Diane Abbott made him want to hate all black women. Well, on social media, the business secretary, Kemi Badenoch, described those alleged comments as racist. And we can speak to her now live on Breakfast. Good morning, Minister. I think it's the first time uh, we've spoken to you since you, you made those comments on social media. I just wonder... How did it make you feel when, when you read those alleged comments for the first time? Uh, it didn't make me feel anything in particular. I just read them and I thought that uh, these comments were, were inappropriate. I hadn't actually realised the news for a while, but it seemed to be something that was dominating uh, the headlines. In fact, I'm still amazed that over a week later I'm, still, I'm being asked about it. Well, you, you felt strongly enough about it to, to come out on social media and, and say that they were racist, even though at the time the Prime Minister hadn't yes, done so. Yes, that, that was a week ago. Yes, that was a week ago. That was but, a week ago. But, I'm surprised I'm still talking about it. Are you surprised? Because this is a man who is the Conservative Party's biggest donor. We know that he's given £10 million uh, to your party. Um, mm. Are you comfortable with the fact that uh, that money is is not being given back? Yes, uh, and as I said uh, earlier this morning, and also, as I said last week uh, on Tuesday, when I explained my views, um, I thought that the comments were racist, but he had apologised. I think when people apologise, we need to accept that and move on. This wasn't something that he had said on the day. These were reported comments. We're not even sure if we've heard the accuracy of them. These were reported comments five years ago, which were made, as I understand, in private, uh, and his recollection of it is not clear either. I have said that, as reported, those comments were racist. But in the grand scheme of things that I am looking at and the problems that I'm trying to solve, this is nowhere near the priorities of any of my constituents or, uh, I think, the general public. The work that we have done as a party in tackling prejudice, discrimination and racism is something that I have worked on personally. Whether or not someone who gave us money may have said something inappropriate which we've apologised for in the grand scheme of things, um, I don't think is that relevant to the people who I'm working for, which is my constituents and the rest the country. OK, so that's the £10 million that he's given in the past. What about these reports that uh, the party is maybe still processing an extra £5 million for him, from him at the moment? Given what we now know, um, are yeah. you comfortable with that money being kept by the party? Well, as, I, as I, I, I've, I've just said, that he's apologised for his comments. I think that, that should be the end of the matter. I think this endless churning around of exactly when and how much the donations were is a distraction from the work which I am doing uh, here today in Coventry, where we're talking about small businesses and how to make life easier for entrepreneurs. The Prime Minister has been working very hard on a package that is going to improve the well-being and welfare of small businesses and self-employed people across the country, including many people who are ethnic minorities. That's what's going to make their lives easier, uh, irrespective of whether or not uh, there's been a donation here or there to the Conservative Party. But while you talk about jobs in Coventry with the Prime Minister, it is the Prime Minister's own job, which is the speculation on the front page of virtually all the newspapers I've got here in front of me. And people saying part of that is that he didn't lead quickly enough on this issue about donations, that, yes, he said these comments, these alleged comments were racist after you said they were racist, but until you spoke out, he didn't, that he was, he was following your lead. Uh, well, I disagree with that. Uh, I believe that they were establishing the facts of the ma matter. I gave a personal opinion. And to be honest, I don't want a prime minister who's just going to be lurching out, making comments every five minutes in response to the lead media. What he's not doing is following the media's lead. And I'm very pleased that uh, he agreed with me. But I was making my comments in a personal capacity as the only black woman in the cabinet. This was last Tuesday. Uh, the comments had been discussed over the weekend then. I'm just 
very surprised that instead of talking about the work that we're doing here in the West Midlands, where we've had lots of investment uh, coming in, 40% more than we had last year, all of the work that uh, I'm doing on auto and manufacturing, that's not something that people are interested in. And this is one of the reasons why I think the public are fed up with the way the politics is trivialized. We are all working very hard to do so much for the people of this country, and yet we end up spending all our time answering questions about last week's news, which was, quite frankly, uh, a line drawn under once he had made his apology. I can sense your frustration, but doesn't this get to, to the, the question about Rishi Sunak, which is that if he had led, if he'd come out right away and said what he eventually kind of was forced to say, that these comments were racist, then this wouldn't have dragged on for so long. That it, it is because he, he didn't do the politics of this, he didn't get the leadership right, that we're in this position, that it's still dominating the front pages of all the papers this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I disagree. The only reason why it's still dominating the front page is because you are not interested in the work that the government is doing. You are interested in a story from last week which has been apologised for and everyone has moved on. I have been in my constituency, has not raised once. People were asking me about the work that I was doing, the trade deals that were happening. People were asking what we were doing about the cost of living. They were asking what we were going to do about the NHS. I'm afraid that this is something that is pure media bubble speculation it is not what the country cares about you I'm not I'm not from frustrated I'm very happy to to answer the questions but I think it's more reflective about what the BBC is interested in rather than what the government I is want doing. to talk to you though about uh, your announcements today uh, you're pledging up to 20,000 more apprenticeships um, with more training and and cutting red tape um, isn't this something that, that should yes, have happened right. anyway before it's something that happens continually, but we need to keep uh, explaining to people what we are doing, uh, what the, new, the, the newest thing might be. Of course, it, it is something that happens anyway. We're always cutting red tape, but this time around, the package is specifically focused on small businesses. I know as business secretary that people often think that what we do is focused on big business, and uh, one of the things that we're doing today uh, at this conference is emphasizing just how critical small businesses are to the wealth and productivity of the country. 99% of businesses in this country are small and medium-sized. Many people don't know that. They employ about 60% of the population. They include a lot of people who are self-employed, people who we've been helping, uh, for instance, with the national insurance contributions, which the Chancellor made uh, in the spring budget. And also uh, the Northern Powerhouse Fund, £600 million, providing loans and access to, um, access to finance. Businesses often tell us that they're not able to access finance, and we are trying to show them what the government is doing to support them. And to those small business owners and workers who thought that Brexit would lead to greater freedom and red tape being slashed much sooner, what, what do you say to them that, that, you know, that they feel frustrated that maybe they haven't seen the benefits they were expecting from Brexit? Uh, well, this is, you know, this is one of the things that I'm keen uh, to make sure I get the message out on. So, yes, we're going as quickly as we can. We have to be very considered in terms of the regulations that we removed. But uh, since we've left the, the European Union, we've removed lots of laws. Uh, for instance, we changed things around the Working Time Directive, uh, the f uh, financial reporting that I'm talking about today. But we also released a report at the end of January showing what changes had been made four years on. And what uh, I'm not here to say is that there haven't been challenges. There is always challenge when there is change. But we're demonstrating how we are making life easier for business and what we are doing to make sure that they continue to trade and especially export, which we know is something that helps to deliver growth for business. And when you're next to Rishi Sunak this morning, you know full well that back in Westminster, there's a lot of talk about a challenge to his leadership. Talk about uh, support gathering around uh, your cabinet colleague Penny Morden, that she could be a candidate that people will unify around and that the Prime Minister's days are number. How, how safe do you think he is? Uh, well, I'm sure if Penny was here, she would be uh, distancing herself from those comments. I've been saying for a long time that the small minority of MPs who think that this is something to be talking about should stop it. We have local elections. People need to know what the government and local government has been doing for them. But I also know that the Prime Minister has seen this happen uh, many times before. People used to put out uh, similar rumours about other candidates for many years. It's just part and parcel of politics. I am very happy to be with him this morning. 
um, we work well together. I will be supporting him today. I don't think that there is very much to these rumors. It's almost the same thing we've been re reading week after week for the last two years. And we need to make sure that one or two MPs cannot dominate the news narrative when 350 uh, plus MPs have different views. Kemi Badenoch, thank you for joining us from Coventry here on Breakfast. Thanks for your time.